boy. So here they come. Here they come. Nice to have a chance to talk without any distractions, don't you think, Norma? Uh, uh, Norma? Norma! Over here, Arthur. What are you doing? I told the Newmans I'd keep an eye on their place while they're on vacation. Where did they go this time? Uh, Europe. Ah, Europe. I know, Arthur. How come everyone goes to Europe but us? We'll get there someday. We'll just have to keep saving. We've been saving for years, but something always comes up. Honey, the roof was unavoidable. How much longer? We're leaving for Paris in 10 days. Hey, no worries, Doc. <laughs> it's not going to rain for a week. And remember what happened the next time we had saved oh, enough? Oh, do I. And then we drive from Toulouse, which is in France, to Barcelona, which is in Spain. Two countries in a little more than two hours. How exciting is that? I'm hungry. Me too. Copycat. Baby. Green doofus. Okay, you two, that's enough. We'll eat as soon as your mother gets home from her appointment. Hey, sweetie, I was just telling Angie and Roy about Europe. Arthur, about our trip? <laughs> and the last time we saved enough money... went to something important. But why is it that everyone travels except us? It just seems like that. Only because I'm reminded of it every day. Why didn't the Newmans ask their other neighbors to take in their paper? Oh, they tried, but the Kilroys are in Florida, the Rosses are in New York, and the Silverns went to Europe. Again. <laughs> Girl, I'm serious. When it comes to guys, I'm through with them. Hey, Corey! <laughs> Your desk. I know, and mine was the only one. <laughs> What are you doing? Whatever it takes to win your heart. If I have to bump into your desk, so be it. The only thing I like you to do to my desk, Kurt, is stay away from it. Good afternoon. Oh, good. Now, who would like to tell me what is happening in class like, today? I don't know. <laughs> well, then, I guess I'll just have to look it up myself. Ah, yes. Today begins our two-week project on contemporary living skills. You will be paired into role-playing couples, husband and wife. Yo, Mr. Mazer. Yes? What happens if I don't plan on getting married? In that case, Mr. Spendicky, I suspect that young ladies everywhere will breathe a sigh of relief. <laughs> now, in your roles as couples, such variables as income, occupation, and number of children will be assigned. So, Mr. Mazer, when do we get to pick our husbands? You don't. I used the computer to do this task for two reasons. One, to guarantee fairness. Two, because I couldn't stand the thought of doing it myself. Well, let's get started. The first couple, Margaret Besser and Harold Yuan. The second couple, Carmel Franklin and David Peterson. Please, please, please quiet down. Just a few more to go. Corey Johnson. And G. G, I can't read this name. Oh, oh, it's Rachel Thomas. Rachel Thomas? The final couple, Angie Biddlebeep and John Kurtz. That's it. Any questions? Is it too late to transfer? 
Hey, way to go, Curtsy. If you can score a wife like Angie Bindleby, there's hope for all of us. Hey, sweet Danny K does what he can. Okay, you pint-sized demon. How exactly did you rig this? Angie, my darling. Say darling to me one more time, and I'll make sure you tuck through your shoes. But darling, this is just something meant to be. Blame it on Faye. I don't think so. What did you do, John Kurtz? Nothing. <laughs> okay, I got to Mr. Missouri's computer using my screen name, Faye, and help randomize the pairings in less. Random way. Well, fate meet doom, because you're gonna tell Mr. Mazer you corrupted this whole project. It's not gonna look good. You should have thought of that first, Kurtz. I mean, for you. After all, I am Mr. Mazer's favorite student, and since there's no proof and I'll deny it, you'll just look like a raving paranoid. I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> you are incorrigible, devious, unbelievable. I guess that's why you married me. bad names before, but never something as awful, disgusting, and hurtful as Mrs. John Kurtz. That will be Senora Juan Kurtz. <laughs> Sorry, just studying for my Spanish test tomorrow. Come on, Angie, it's just a dumb project. It's role playing. It's not like you're really married. <laughs> That's easy for you two to say. You're a fundraiser married to a doctor. Un doctor. And I'm a model married to a luxury car dealer with three locations. Tres. Why do I have to be a stay-at-home mom with a husband oh, who's a bus driver? Look on the bright side, Angie. With Brainiac Kurtz as your partner, you're guaranteed an A on the project. I'll try to remember that tonight. Why? What's tonight? Our first assignment. Dinner with wife's parents. <laughs> John Kurtz is coming to our house for dinner? Jeez, why don't you tell CNN? Man, I'd love to see that. But I'm eating early because I got soccer practice. Oh, well. Say hola to my cuñado nuevo. Your what? Mi cuñado nuevo. My new brother-in-law. So I've got my bus stop at a red light on State and 3rd. And a car pulls up, and the driver yells up to me, Hey, buddy, could you tell me how to get to Broadway? I yelled at him and say, Sure, you need a lot of talent and a really good agent. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, John. Thanks, Kath. We bus drivers have thousands of them. Darn, we only have time to hear that one. Sorry you have to run, but it's getting late. Bye-bye. But, Pumpkin... I'm not your pumpkin. Oops, looks like someone had a hard day with the kids. Oh, that's right, your children. What are their names again? Um, Susie and Morris? Sophie and Boris. She's two and he's seven months. They're so cute, they look just like Angie. No, 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 they look nothing like me. Wow, two and seven months, you must change a lot of diapers. Diapers? Yeah, you know, babies, diapers. Mom, I have a nanny to do all that stuff. A nanny. That must be nice. When we started a family, I promised my little cheetah here that she wouldn't have to give up going shopping and having lunch with the girls every day. Whoa, a nanny and shopping, lunch with the girls? That must be hard to support with the bus driver's salary. You have no idea, sir. In fact, we'd be in real trouble if I weren't so successful in the market. My mommy clips coupons, too. No, Catherine, the stock market. A bus driver and a stock market whiz. Mm, Mr. Mazer thought of everything, didn't Oh, that's he? not for Mr. Mazer, sir. I've been in the stock market since I was little. When other kids were trading Pokemon cards, I was trading Microsoft. How cute. Cute. First year, I turned a few dollars into enough to take the whole family on vacation. You're kidding. Guess I just have a knack. What's your portfolio like? I don't really have a portfolio right now. More like, um... A post-it note. But I'm always open to new ideas. Well, I've had my eye on a few companies that are poised for explosive growth. That's very interesting, John, but now, if you don't mind... Angie, where are your manners? We haven't even had dessert. I don't suppose you'd have any hot tips for me. Sure, Dr. Bindlebeep, sir. I'm confident we could find something that would meet your investment needs. Really? How much would you charge? Charge? Come on, your family! I can't take it. I'm gonna crack. Kurt is everywhere. Dinner was bad enough, but he's been at my house every night this week. Oh, chill, Ange. The project is over in a couple of days. Then he'll be out of your life forever. If I never see John Kurt step foot in my house again, it'll be too soon. Hi, Ange. <laughs> if you need me, I'll be in the den with your pops. Seven points, yeah! Get in here, John, you're missing it! Angie? What's wrong? Uh, John Kurtz is here for the fourth day in a row, and you ask me what's wrong? Well, he's been helping your father get involved in some stocks. Stocks? They're watching football! 
Hutton Industries up seven points. That's another three hundred dollars for the Europe Fund. Hey. Mm -hmm. At least it's not football. one is cute. Actually, I was born in upstate New York. I mean, what are you doing at my back door? I came over the fence. See, I discovered a shortcut from my house to yours that cut six minutes off my travel time. Great. It's for our one week anniversary, and some people thought it wouldn't last. Kurt, you shouldn't have. It's okay. Mrs. Cumberbur's garden is full of them. Thanks for the thought. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go upstairs and take a nap. For some reason, I haven't been sleeping all that well. Me neither. I think it has to do with this marriage thing. Really? Same here. Problem is, we spend all this time together during the day. Yes, that's definitely the problem. That it makes the separation at night so much tougher. Here, put this on your nightstand. It might help ease your pain. Hey, John. Hello, sir. I've looked at all the analyses, and I think it's time to pump up the volume on Hutton Industries. Excellent. Come on inside, and we'll talk about it. Angie, you've got yourself quite a guy there. to St. Louis, and I said, sure you can. If you can run 80 miles an hour, it left five minutes ago. <laughs> hey, Johnny K, we bus drivers have thousands of them. Huh? Oh my gosh, Daddy, why are you dressed like that? Surprise, honeybee. See, with all the money we made on the stock market, Johnny Boy and I, huh, huh? Bought the bus line. That's right, Peaches and Cream. And someday, all this will be yours. <laughs> I love it when she gets excited. <laughs> My boy. Sure, Pop. Uh-oh. Out of coffee. No problem. And you can, sweetums, would you please go brew your loving man some more java? Daddy, did you hear the way he talked to me? Mr. Kurtz, I am very disappointed in you. That's no way to talk to a spouse, uh, a life partner, especially when she's my daughter. I'm sorry. You see, John, they'll take any show of kindness as a sign of weakness. Never ask. Always demand. Observe. 
Angela, hit that kitchen and bring us some Joe now and grind it fresh. <laughs> <sighs> Sweetie, are you all right? Out! Get out! Don't ever talk to me like that again! <laughs> Mom, got a minute? Of course, dear. I'm the queen of leisure. I'm only doing this because I gave my nanny the day off. Mom, you know how you and Dad always want me to do my best and get good grades? All right! The message got through. That's why it's so hard to tell you. Mom... I want a divorce. Wow. <laughs> I didn't think we'd be having this conversation ever, let alone at 15. Mom, I'm serious. So am I. Honey, marriage is not something you choose to enter into lightly. I didn't choose this. This just happened like a natural disaster or a brick falling on my head. Yeah, well, a lot of young people jump into marriage without knowing what they're getting into. What about you and Daddy? We dated over two years before he proposed. You know, he wasn't even the first proposal I'd had. Before I met your father, I was dating an older man. No. He was smart, handsome, and worshipped the ground I walked on. That has its drawbacks, believe me. I got the feeling he wasn't seeing the real me. Putting me on that pedestal meant he was in love with an ideal, not a person. And when you met Daddy? We're good friends and real partners in life. It's worth the wait to find someone like that. But you're just talking about life. I'm talking about blowing a guarantee A in social studies. If I don't stick it out for four more days, I'll... Honey, just be honest with yourself. Okay. I guess I gotta do what I gotta do. Here. But mom, like you said, just do what you gotta do. And things are going okay, I guess, in our marriage. Except when he says he wants to date other girls. And what do you think about that? That's a bummer! Thank you, Miss Thomas, for that insightful assessment. Mr. Kurtz, Miss Bindlebeef, how are things going with you? Fantastic! My lovely bride, who looks as young and vivacious as the day we became a match, makes every day a joy. And you should see her with the kids. Just two days ago, she took them to the park. Hold it. Mr. Mazur, I don't care if you film me. <gasps> I mean, I care, but I don't want this marriage to last. I thought maybe it was my fault because I hated the idea in the first place, but really it was because... First of all, we don't even know each other. And second, you put me on this pedestal. You can't have a real equal partnership between two people when one of them is always this ideal. Come on, Angie. Yeah, girl, hurry up. Hold it, Miss Bindlebeep. I want to talk to you. Go ahead, sir. You can give me the bad news. Don't worry, Miss Bindlebeep. You're not going to fail this class. In fact, I rather admire your... your Honesty? Actually, I was thinking more of panache. Panache. That's a good thing, right? Does that mean I'm getting an A? Miss Bindlebeep, panache can only take you so far. Angie, what you say in class, I have been putting you on a pedestal. Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore. I wouldn't blame you if you never talked to me again. Kurt, get lost. Hey, that's the start. <laughs> All right, Hutton Industries. Mommy, pay attention. This is exciting. I was looking for Dad. It's not like him to be late for a big game. Stop him, Roy. He's a chump. Mom, he's the best one out there. And if you ever tell him that, I'll... Hey, babe. How we doing? Honey, where have you been? You missed almost all the action. I know. I'm sorry. What's the score? Zero, zero. Well, add another two zeros and a four in front of it. And what's that spell? You? <laughs> no, sweetie. It spells Europe. Four thousand dollars? That's right. We did it. Hot Ministries went up to my target price, and I sold. We are finally going to Europe this summer. Mom, Dad, look. Incredible! Wasn't he, Angie? I guess he was okay. Congratulations, Roy! You did it! And I know just what we're going to celebrate. Indiana! What? This is Coach Vander Grover Grover. Sure, hi, Coach Vander Grover Grover. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Bindlebeep. You must be very proud of your big scorer here. We certainly are. Good, because the stars of the future will really bring out his talent. The what of the what? Yeah, stars of the future is the best soccer camp there is. They only take 100 kids from the whole country. Great. 
to keep working hard, practicing, maybe some. Oh, he's ready now. And since I'm on the selection committee, we'd like to have him. Can I do it? When is this camp? First two weeks of August. But if you book now, Roy gets a break on airfare, lodging, equipment, insurance, everything. Break? Uh, how much of a break? Oh, the whole shebang usually doesn't run more than about uh, thirty-five hundred dollars. Mom, Dad, I can go, right? Well, Roy, the truth is, it's up to your father. Roy, try to understand, but thirty-five hundred dollars leaves you nothing for spending money. Let's make it an even four. Of course you can go. Dad, you mean we're not going to Europe? Sorry, but I guess we'll have to settle for a two-week drive somewhere. Two weeks in the car with the family? That's all we can afford? I'm afraid so. Darn, I never should have divorced Kurt. <laughs> Thank you.